Are you looking to get a CNC for a reasonable price? This might be it. And CNCs are getting cheaper, but are they getting better as well? In this video, I'll go through the assembly, the specs of the machine, I will try to upgrade the weakest point, and I will also try to make a piece of furniture using the machine with a very limited amount of material. And in the end, I'll tell you if I think this machine is worth buying. This right here has been the go-to cheap CNC for many years now. It's the 3018 Pro and you can get it for as low as $150. The downside of the 3018 Pro are many though. The build quality is poor, the spindle is weak and the work surface is really small. So I was quite eager to try this out. This is the TTC 450 from Two Trees. Yeah, I know they should work on their machine names because that's not catchy at all. When I was asked to do a review of this CNC, I looked online and I was thinking to say no immediately. But when I saw the specifications of the machine, I thought this might be quite good. And one of the things that got me to say yes was that it works with Easel, which is my go-to software for CNCs. I can't stress that enough. It makes using a CNC so much easier. But there was also one thing bothering me, the spindle. We will get to that soon. I started with the assembly, of course. The website says 70% pre-assembled, but then it turns out that those 30% would take me three full hours. So if it would have been 0% assembled, it would have taken me as long as around 10 hours. The manual is okay, although I had some hiccups along the way. And those 70% pre-assembled doesn't matter if they aren't well done, which caused some problems later on. In the box you also get all the tools necessary for the assembly and more, and if there is one thing you need to look into when getting a CNC is the actual assembly time. I have the X-Carve as well and that thing took me almost two full days assembling because that wasn't pre-assembled at all. So what about the specs? Let's first talk about the elephant in the room, the price of the machine. On the website it says $599 at the moment and it also says $3 off with the coupon code that they just provide at the top of the screen. So that would make it $596. And please don't do that. It isn't a serious way of attracting customers. Give it a reasonable price and stick with it. Show some pride. But it is also discounted from $999. And that price makes it a big difference. It has a 460 by 460 work area. So it's fairly big. And the height of the machine is also good enough as you're supposed to be able to engrave 80 millimeters deep if you have a bit that is that long, which I don't have. It doesn't really matter to me as long as I can do up to two inches, I'm really happy. It is controlled by NEMA 23 motors and NEMA 17 motors. But on the website this fooled me because they state that it is controlled by a 17HS8401S NEMA 23 motors. So I thought all of them were NEMA 23s because of that comma sign right there. But the first part turns out that's just a number for a NEMA 17 motor, which all axes run on except for the C axis. It has a touch display with a built-in Wi-Fi module and you can use it with a computer, an app or by the screen loading your files through an SD card. It also came with an SD card and I prefer connecting my machine directly to the computer but it's good to know there are options. The gantry seems sturdy enough, made from aluminium, all painted black which I like. And it also comes with a C probe which is really nice even though it looks cheap. You put the C probe on top of your workpiece and have the machine lower the bit until it hits the Z probe. And then the machine knows where the top of your workpiece is. Cables are tucked away in drag chains, which is good, and underneath the machine protecting the cables, but it also makes the entire machine look a bit more aesthetic and overall professional. It has limit switches on all axes to prevent the machine from crashing into the gantry, and the MDF spoil board is split in two pieces, and you get some clamps to clamp down your material. There is no flex in the MDF since it's all well supported underneath. It also comes with an extra collet for 6mm bits, so if you're in the imperial part of the world, you would have to get the metric bits if you want them to fit. You get 10 30 degree carving bits, 1 milling bit and 1 V carving bit with the pack. If you only want to do the occasional CNC work, you can head on over to the sponsor of this video, PCBWay.com. They offer CNC milling, 3D printing and of course, they can provide you with PCBs in world class. 
Check out their website for more information. Thanks, PCBWay. But there is one immediate downside to this CNC, the spindle. It's a 775 spindle with an RPM of 8000. I will try it out, but I would love to see what this machine can do with a more powerful router as well. But first, let's get started trying this thing out. There is no dust collection included with it, but they will have upgrades that you can get including dust collection from what I could read on the website. But for now, I want to try to do some simple tasks to see what the motors and the spindle can handle. I fired up Easel, which is my favorite CNC software. For 95% of the tasks I want to do on the CNC, Easel works perfectly. It has all the settings I want and it just works good. But no matter what I did, I could not get it to work. So I looked again on the website. It says it should work with Easel. So I started searching around and I found that the motherboard used with this machine, in fact, is not compatible with Easel as of yet. And that is a big downside for me, but it doesn't mean I can't run the machine and I can still use Easel to export that G code if I want that. But I would rather just use Easel for cutting as well. So there is one minus point from the marketing team on Two Trees because it says on the website that it is compatible with Easel, but it's not. It's a lie. What they mean is that you can export the G code and use it with the software that they send with the machine. The USB stick provided comes with a software called Candle, which is, well, fine. Uh, no, actually, it isn't. Compared to Easel, at least, in my opinion, it isn't. But you can use Candle to send G-code straight to the machine. I placed my G-code onto the SD card instead and had it run directly from the machine display. I tried using the C-probe over and over again, but I couldn't get it to work. The probing worked fine, but when the carve starts, it it was just carving mid-air, like it wasn't calculating for the thickness of the probe at all. They did provide me with a video on how to use the probe by resetting the C-axis after probing, but that didn't work either. So I did it the old-fashioned way by placing my bit on top of the work surface, which works just fine. But then I realized another weird thing. On the display there are three menus. One of them is to control the machine. In there you can actually activate the spindle. But when you go to the second menu to start your engrave, there is no button to actually turn the spindle on. And the spindle wouldn't turn on by itself when I was starting a carve. It might be a G-code issue, but they should have the option in the engrave menu to turn the spindle on as well. But a good thing, since the machine has Wi-Fi, you can actually connect to the machine through the browser and upload your files wirelessly to the SD card. So that's a good thing. And then I started a simple engrave, and it looked awful. So I started investigating, and I found that one of the parts that came pre-assembled had loose screws. So I had to unassemble the machine and try to attach the screws, which caused some anger, to say the least. In my right hand, oh my god. And when that was done, I tried it again, and this time it worked better. It didn't carve as deep this time, but it seemed accurate enough. So then I tried making a circle, but it didn't come out a circle, so I had to calibrate the machine G-code, and I found it's a bit off. I tried a circle again, and this time it was better. But still not perfect though, so the machine might need even more calibration to work perfectly. For this particular CNC, I designed a flat pack stool in Fusion 360 that would use the entire work area of the machine. So the total length of the legs are 450 millimeters, and add the bit riding outside of that, it would amount to a cut that was about 456 millimeters in length. To do the carve, I had this plywood with a black surface, and it was just about enough size to be able to make the entire stool. If I screw this up, there won't be any stool. So I started and it seemed to be doing fine until I hit the end stop. I tried replacing my workpiece and tried it again, but with the same result, still hit the end stop. So then I toggled the machine all the way back until it hit the limit switch. By the way, that's annoying as hell because the display keeps saying that I've hit the limit switch. And when I press OK, that message just reappears. But I realized that if I'm really quick, I can move the machine right in between the messages. So I tried moving the machine exactly 450 millimeters, and it can. But it couldn't go any further than that, so I couldn't actually cut my stool. 
So a more accurate machine travel would actually be 450 millimeters. But I hadn't ruined the entire piece of plywood just yet, so I decided to make a step stool instead. But before I did that, I wanted to see if I could upgrade the CNC right away. As I said, I was disappointed with the spindle. I actually asked the company right away what the dimensions were for the backplate holding the spindle, because I wanted to 3D print a mount for a better spindle, like the Makita router I have. But they said it was a company secret, so once the design was done I could actually 3D print it. Um, to be honest, I made a couple of iterations before I got it right. Then I could attach it with the already provided screws and make sure it was well seated. Now this is just plastic PET G and it would be good to get this in aluminium instead but for now I think this will work. I added the Makita router to the mount and it seemed sturdy enough. The maximum speed of the machine is 800 millimeters a minute so I can't increase the speed more than that. But what I can do is cut deeper each pass instead. Now with the upgraded spindle this is a much better machine. The plywood was 15 millimeters and each part took around 20 minutes to carve. So in about 1 hour and 30 minutes, I had this really tiny stool. So final verdict. This is a budget CNC one step above the 3018 Pro in my opinion. If you buy this machine, you have to be prepared to do some maintenance and problem solving yourself. And there are some issues still around it that can be overcome, but to summarize, it doesn't support easel as of now. That means my way of using it is by using easel to export G-code, then I send the G-code through the browser to the SD card in the CNC and via the CNC display I can then start the carve. And if the price stays below $600, I think it's well worth the money since it can be upgraded. I do think they should supply a dust collection right away with the pack, but you can get away with cleaning the dust whilst carving. But where do you see the use case for the larger work area than the 3018 Pro? They also claim that this works with Carvico, but I have no idea, I don't use that. By the way, they also say it's supported by Artcam, but that has been discontinued as far as I know, so why would anyone want that? The big downsides, as I see it now, is not being able to use easel and the weak spindle. But as long as you work slowly through the material, this works fine. I guess you could look into upgrading the NEMA 17 motors to increase the speed as well, but that would probably require even more upgrades. If you want to get this machine, I'll have a link down below. For the current price and what the machine offers, I think it's a strong competitor on the CNC market, but there are also things they should consider updating and making better right off the bat. But what do you think? Is it worth buying? I'll see you in the next video. Bye.